week's market update. Brexit tension hits the pound, oil rises on threatened Saudi production cuts, where next for markets after the midterm elections, and why stock pickers struggled through the October volatility. The Brexit negotiations are reaching make or break time and the tension is starting to show. Two and a half years after the EU referendum, we're getting to the point where tough choices have to be made if a cliff edge, no deal exit is to be avoided next March. Yesterday, the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, said that the 27 remaining states were pretty much ready with their side of the withdrawal treaty. It should be in place for Prime Minister Theresa May to put before cabinet later today or tomorrow. Whether she can persuade a fractured government and then parliament itself to accept the terms on offer is another matter altogether. Last minute negotiations are underway pretty much 24 hours a day now as diplomats continue to grapple with the complexities of coming up with a customs arrangement that removes the need for a hard border with Ireland and which can satisfy Remainers, Leavers and continuing EU members. Even at this 11th hour, there remain sticking points on the terms of the agreement, particularly the grounds for bringing a so-called backstop agreement to an end. On the British side, many Brexiteers and Remainers alike are resisting any deal which could leave Britain in a perpetual close embrace with Europe, but without any influence in Brussels. On the other side, many on the continent are wary of giving Britain any potentially unfair advantage over continuing member states. Meanwhile, the UK government was rocked on Friday evening by another high-profile ministerial resignation. This time, it was Boris Johnson's less flamboyant brother, Joe. He quit in protest at the Prime Minister's so-called checkers plan, which he and many others believes would be a worse outcome than simply staying in the EU. He's calling for a second referendum to give people the chance to change their mind. The government has said there will not be a people's vote in any circumstances, which means that failure to achieve parliamentary approval for any agreed deal could bring the government down and trigger an election, possibly ushering in a Jeremy Corbyn-led government. Brexit is starting to look like the biggest failure of policy since Suez. The clock is now very much ticking on the Brexit talks because without a deal, within days, it's thought that time will run out to gain the necessary parliamentary approval before the March 29th hard deadline for Britain to leave the EU. Unsurprisingly, the pound has taken a walloping as the uncertainty and political tension has reached fever pitch. The pound fell 0.6% against the dollar yesterday to $1.29. The euro too is under pressure as investors judge that an unruly exit in March will be bad news for Europe's economies as well. The euro was 0.7% lower. UK stocks were also out of favour with the FTSE 100 down 0.4% to less than 7,100 yesterday and by about the same amount this morning. The British blue chip index is 5% lower than its 52 week high as investors shun UK assets. The UK is also in focus this week thanks to a string of announcements which will shine the spotlight on the health of the UK economy. Employment and wage data today are followed by inflation and house price numbers on Wednesday and then a snapshot of retail sales on Thursday. Meanwhile, there's a steady stream of big UK companies reporting this week. There's a particular focus on the commercial property market with Land Securities, British Land and Great Portland Estates all unveiling figures. House builders Taylor Wimpy and Bovis are in the spotlight, while First Group, Vodafone and SSE round off a busy week for corporate news. Now, Brexit is not the only problem facing the stock market. The recent rally for shares after October's rout is looking increasingly shaky this week after a slump in Apple shares, down 5% on Monday, contributed to a 2% fall in the S&P 500. Nasdaq fell 2.8%. The immediate concern for Apple is concern that demand for its iPhone may have peaked. Profit warnings from suppliers to the smartphone maker have indicated waning appetite for replacing the increasingly expensive devices. The wobble on Wall Street was picked up overnight in Asia, where Tokyo's Topics Index fell as much as 3.1%. China's CSI 300, one of the worst performing indices this year, was down as much as 1.4%. Markets are also getting to grips with the implications of last week's US midterm elections. For once, the pundits called the result correctly, with the Democrats winning control of the House of Representatives and the Republicans increasing their hold on the Senate. 
Markets move on unexpected results, so the investor response was initially pretty subdued. Shares were largely unchanged as attention shifted to what a divided Congress might mean for policy going forward. It's a mixed bag. On the one hand, a Democratic House ties the President's hands, making any further tax cuts unlikely and marginally raising the risk of an impeachment. On the other hand, the possibility of slowing growth in 2019 makes it a bit more likely that the Federal Reserve will ease back on its monetary tightening plans, which the stock market would most likely take as a positive. Typically, stock markets do well in the period following the midterm elections because the incumbent president starts to manoeuvre policy towards re-election at the next full election in two years' time. This time, however, much of the good news of this presidency, in terms of deregulation and tax cuts, came early in the four-year cycle. It's possible that the good news has already been priced in by investors. The other reason markets are cautious this time round is the expectation that a constrained president on the domestic front will take his frustrations out on the international stage. Trade tensions are expected to intensify in the year ahead. The prospect of a deeper standoff between the US and China was raised by comments from President Xi Jinping this week, reheating an old Maoist slogan about Chinese self-reliance. China has sought to present itself as a champion of globalization in the face of Donald Trump's retreat into isolationism. But recent bans by the US Commerce Department on American companies selling components to Chinese companies has highlighted the country's vulnerability. Volatile markets should be good news for stock pickers, providing opportunities to back winners and avoid losers. That's the theory. Well, it's been tested to destruction by the October rout. Hedge funds, which typically have the opportunity to benefit from both rising and falling prices, suffered their worst month in October for seven years, as many found themselves overexposed to the newly out of favour technology sector. Only a quarter of hedge funds were positive for the month as a whole, and the gap between the best and worst performers widened. And finally, the cost of crude has been in focus after Brent rose 2% on the back of a threat from Saudi Arabia that it might cut production and then promptly gave back all its gains. The volatility reflects a split in the previously solid coalition of Saudi Arabia and Russia, who've been cooperating on output to manage the oil price. Both countries have been pumping pretty much as fast as they can, under pressure from the US to offset reduced flows from Iran following the reimposition of American sanctions. Now, Saudi Arabia is looking to tighten the market instead to push the oil price higher, while Russia is saying that any excess supply is short term and will pass. Having reached a high of $86 a barrel recently, Brent had fallen into bear market territory, down more than 20% to around $70 a barrel, until tough talk from Riyadh put a floor under the commodity. The rift between Saudi and Russia means investors are struggling to identify the direction of travel for crude. The oil price is highly volatile. It's vulnerable to changes in sentiment as well as real shifts in the supply and demand balance. In the run-up to the return of Iranian sanctions, traders pushed the price higher, fearing that the loss of Iranian oil would leave the market short of stocks. But the issue of waivers by Washington allowing a number of countries to carry on buying Iranian oil has seen a major reversal for the oil price. As a key driver of economic activity and inflation, where oil goes next matters a great deal. Music